I also have a letter to enter to the record uh, regarding the case of Mr. Torben Sondergaard, who is an, a legal immigrant from Denmark, came to our country legally, applied for asylum properly, had no criminal charges. He was arrested for overstay of his visa. He's been incarcerated in, in solitary confinement for over one year. He'd been persecuted by this administration and targeted, we believe, because he's an evangelical Christian minister. Well, you might have heard of a pastor who was detained in an ICE facility. He was from Denmark. He came into America completely legally, and then something happened where he got arrested, first on charges of something like human trafficking or gun smuggling, and then it was just really obscure charges that no one would define to him. Now, this went on not for 10 days, not for 100 days, but for over 400 days, he was detained. Now, he was seeking amnesty because he was being persecuted in his country of Denmark for going after building the kingdom of God and being a pastor, building schools, teaching people about who God is. And because of the persecution was so great, he came to America and he was seeking amnesty. During that time of amnesty, there was a bunch of stuff that happened where people did not like his ministry and they came after him legally and he was put in prison. And why he was in there for over 400 days, like I said, he started to really get a message for the church in America and the church worldwide that persecution is coming. There's a time coming, it's here already. There's intolerance, it's gonna equal some things for the church that we've never faced before in the Western world, in Europe and America and Canada. And he has a message that's gonna help secure you. And also I wanted to give an update to all the people who follow Torben's case, if you've heard of him before, that he's not only alive and well, but he's ready to take on this generation, the theme of revival, but also get ready for what the enemy wants to do to the church because God is going to do something like we've never seen before in the midst of it. So up next is my interview with Torben Sondergaard. Okay, Torben, you've been a man I have wanted to talk to you, and now I'm here with you face to face and just like watching the saga of your life unfold, it felt like we were all holding our breath for a few minutes or a year, just waiting to see what would happen. And I know I reached out personally to representatives and a local level here in California and, and also some who are in Congress and Senate. And it just seemed like nobody could do anything and no one understood what was going on. And so you were there for quite a long time, but you're out now. And we're so glad that you're out of detainment. Uh, welcome. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, 412 days. Uh, I say it was good. I did not know that from the beginning on because like it was one week at a time, especially in the beginning. But uh, thank you, everyone. And you, Sean, and everyone else who have been praying and helping. It's, it's a journey. What a journey. Yeah, and it's so interesting because I, I watched that clip. I even showed it on our show, and I know it's been picked up by other Christian shows specifically, where uh, you know, representative is like before Congress saying like this, he's being unethically, illegally detained. There's no reason. There's no charges. And it felt like no one could get the job done. And then you were finally released, but not into amnesty. You were actually deported back. Uh, how, what was that like? First of all, when you got out, like what was God doing? What were, I mean, I know we heard a lot of your story. I was able to tell some in the, in the intro, as far as like God showed up for you in jail, as hard as it was, yeah. God was there with you. But like, what was it like to get released? That must've been, so surreal. I would say when to be in prison is one thing. No one liked that. But to be in prison and be married and, yeah. and want to be with your wife is another thing. And and during the time, my wife actually got sick because of all the stress. Oh. And she went to the ER and 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 you're so helpless. Like you, you yeah. she could never call you. You could only call her when the telephone was free. And sometimes there was fight and lockdown and and you couldn't communicate with each other. So, so for me to just see my wife, especially that moment, and give her a hug, that is something that I've been building up for the whole year. So, so that was that was the best ever. I would say that was really amazing, yeah. really beautiful. It wasn't wasn't your daughter? I believe your daughter was engaged to be married during this whole yeah, time. Or? Yeah, and yeah, and that was canceled. We canceled her 18 years birthday. I became a grandfather again while I was in prison. And wow. In two birthdays of myself and my other daughter. So a, a lot of things are, are happening in, in a year. So uh, so much has happened in a year. And I just think of beyond the fact that the whole body of Christ didn't get you for a year, your family, your friendship networks, the people who are in your life, 
just your voice being removed. And, and again, this was in my mind and what, from what I've studied and looked at, there's nothing but religious intolerance about this, mm. which is so interesting because we're in America, which is supposed to be the most free religious state to practice. There's cults all over. I mean, I took in foster care kids from cults, Christian communes that were literally cults who had to do cult deprogramming. And those people started in jail who did yeah. the whole cults. But you yeah. get put into a uh, um, detaining center, you know, an ICE center or whatever. And I just think like, this is so strange. What do you think after that? Because you didn't come out bitter. You didn't come out mad at anybody. As far as we know, <laughs> no, I'm sure it was hard, but you come out, you know, what do you think God's saying about that and doing about this? And tell us about the case. Yeah. I would say that was to be put in handcuffs in, and thrown into prison without understanding why. And yeah. a lot of words was thrown in the air, like human trafficking, weapon smuggling, economic fraud, and and every paper I saw didn't make sense. So, so in the whole year, I, I did not understand why I was there. At the same yeah. time, the border in America is open. People are walking in. I know. And I, I, I saw some of the news there. And that, that was one thing. And then the lies, the, the, oh. um, all the things people are talking about. And it it was hard. It was really, really hard. It was a new world for me, but I knew God's hand was in it. Um, I got a very strong dream in the beginning. I would say after, after a month, I was depressed. I was, I was really not yeah. doing good. I was really depressed. And somebody got a very strong dream for God about God's purpose with me being there. And, and I needed to stand up and take responsibility. And, and it was bigger than me. It was about America and a word for the church. And, and it really changed a lot. And it took me a few more months to really understand, to see that yeah. God had a purpose and a plan with it. And, and I hope it would be a wake up call for everyone because you know back in in Denmark four five years ago four years ago when I experienced persecution it came as a shock. Like I've been doing ministry for years and and people have told me that I would need to leave my country because of lies and persecution for the media. I would have said no, no, yeah. not in Denmark. And then I come to America and I say to people in America, wake up, it's coming to America. And and the attitude was a little. No, not America. No, right. we accept it a little in Europe, but this is still America. And and everyone who really know my case and, and look into it, they, they, they see that this, this is persecution. Like this is really yeah. persecution of believers, of people who love Jesus. And that is the only reason. And, and, and my message is also like, really wake up everyone. Let, let's, yeah. let's stand up. Let's, Come together. Let's let, let's understand the the change that is happening in America and all over the world. Because even when I was back in Europe, the reason I came to America was because I was seeking freedom. And and if America is falling, where do people go? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, and I think of this because we've reported on both in Europe and America Christian organizations that are charities that have had their banking system revoked for no reason. They don't, they just get a notice, you know, can no longer bank with us. And then they try and do lawsuits and the lawsuits don't win their banking mm -hmm. account back and may win some religious freedom or whatever, but it doesn't actually change their status that they went from being able to have a bank account and operate as a, an institutional structure to not being able to do it anymore. And then we've seen people who are being canceled from culture based on past accusations that can't be verified. Like Russell Brand, who's not like a, a believer, but he's a spiritual guy online and he does conservative news media. And all of a sudden stories that can't be corroborated, you know, from, uh, from uh, 30 years ago and 20 years ago are coming mm. up and YouTube just kicked them off their platform based on, I mean, he's guilty until he's proven innocent. Yeah. And so we're watching culture cancel people. We're watching culture vilify people. And every I think the justice issues where people have a need for justice is so high that they're willing to, if somebody says, this guy's the one, then everybody kind of jumps against them. Yeah. And I remember when I was asking some news channels, like, hey, do you guys want to cover Torben? Because I had just covered, uh, covered the thing, like I did a live about you with some of your team. Uh, but you couldn't be on it. But I, I did a live just saying, hey, this is what's happening. This is the current state of what's happening for Torben. And I remember asking some other people, do you want to cover him? And the first response was, oh, I heard some things. 
about him that, and they were, again, they were just that why you were initially brought to jail for human trafficking and yeah. weapon smuggling, which like, you're like, wait, wait, out of all things, like what things I would not, there's like not even an association to. And so that, I was like, no, that's, that's absolutely false. And those, yeah. those haven't even stood as charges against him anymore. He's just yeah. in there now. And they're like, I, I, oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. I, I would but say, I, I would say that, How do it look today? And and that is the thing. It, it looks different in our culture and 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 the way prosecution is coming right now in 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 Europe, for example. There is a politician in uh, in Finland who is being sued for uh, war crimes because he spoke up. No, he actually quoted the Bible. There is a homosexual in in Malta who is. Uh, they're coming after him with the law for sharing his own testimony. There was a guy who prayed out yeah, a a in, yeah. outside clinic, in a clinic, uh, abortion clinic in UK, who's been, they come after him. And the way they do it in Europe right now is, and many other places, is through the law. It's lawfare. They come in and try to change the law. And that was also what they did against me in Denmark. They, they did a mental violence law. But they wow. don't go in and write in the law, target Christians. Of course, they don't write that. It's, it's all hidden. It's all hidden away. Yeah. With, 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 when we hear the mental violence law in Denmark, we're like, yeah, of course. No one wants to do mental violence against other people. It, it makes sense. And, and we need to terrorize people. And we don't hate people. We love people. We are Christians. Yeah. But, but it's sneaking in. It's coming in in ways where suddenly we are being prosecuted and they're using the law to do it. It's not like the, the Muslims or the Hindi, Hindus in, in Pakistan and India. It's, it's through the law. And this is yeah. what we are seeing in the schools in America and all over the place. And, and we're not ready for it. And that was also with me. The biggest comment I heard in the beginning was, Okay, we don't believe Torben, he had done human trafficking and weapons smuggling. That is a little too much. But no one go to jail if they're not done something wrong. And, and that yeah. is what people are saying. And just to say no one, uh, I can come with one person, Jesus. Another person, yeah. Paul, Peter, like, yeah, Peter yeah. the apostles. Uh, so it is happening and it's coming. And, and, and I know for me, Next time I hear people talk about somebody else on YouTube, I will not fall for it anymore. There yeah. is so much lies. There is, so, there is a whole group of people just love creating division against brothers, against mm -hmm. each other. And I've been guilty in that also. And I've really been humiliated in that sense. And when I was in jail, it just came to a new level. It was, it, it was not just somebody behind a YouTube video anymore. Now there's people behind a YouTube video who contacted the government and spread lies. Wow. So suddenly there was so much smoke around me. So everyone thinks there must be a fire because I've been accused yeah. for five, six, seven, eight things. And, and I think it's, it's really something we need to teach the church. We need the church to come together and to be alert of those things because I was maybe the first one who actually went to jail, but I'm not the last one. Yeah. That is sure. yeah. No, it's funny because one of my good friends is a guy named Sean Foy and he's ran for Congress just a couple of years ago. And now he's, he's um, been arrested. Well, not arrested, but he's been um, fined in most of the cities, even in Florida, the state of Florida, which is supposed to be where you were detained, which yeah. is supposed to be the most, lenient yeah. and liberal on conservatives and they're not. And so he has fines from he's still in Florida that they're fighting legally for just doing worship events without masks on and even gathering people as protests. So, you know, we were talking about the other day and, and there's a woman who um, he, she's an independent journalist and she's decided to target Sean uh, because she hates, first of all, she hates the fact she's a very pro COVID masker vaccinator as a Christian and she hated the fact that he stood against that. And then second of all, she just doesn't like him. So she started to figure out how to dig dirt on him. And the things that she published in her article were like, he has a rental house that has weeds and he hasn't taken care of it. What a bad landlord. That means you're supposed to love your neighbor. And she starts to like create smoke, right? From the stupidest yeah. little issues, but she's looking for anything she can to incite 
yeah. anger and frustration towards him. You did th th this happened to you on a masterful manipulative level. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that you're able to share and say, listen, if it happened to me, because I mean, you're just, you're just a normal pastor. You're like a normal guy. I mean, when I say that you move in the anointing, you, you break the <laughs> yokes of injustice over people, you bring deliverance, you yeah. really go after the power of God, which has been part of the controversy is that because there's an anointing, I think that's why the enemy also tries to take people like you out. But, but it's, I love that you have a message about this because I, yeah. one of the reasons why I moved from my itinerant ministry and preaching at churches to media ministry and actually with TBN and CBN and then our own stuff here with pray.com and other things is because I feel like the church isn't awake and I feel like you're such a great wake up call. And so I love that you said that because we are in a time of persecution. And if you stand for anything, there's going to be an attack. There's going to be, and most of the attack in the Western world is always falsified. It's always like taking one detail that may be true and then criminalizing you for it. And what's terrible is the other, the person who's attacking you probably has something greater in their life. They get to actually go to jail for That's yeah. the worst part. And, yeah, and no, look yeah. at that. We, we are still fighting like there's legal, legal cases coming up because in, in our case, we have really found out who's behind it. And I see mm. it's the same people in Denmark who's behind this. And, and when I fled Denmark, one of them wrote an email to me and said, finally, you come to America. So now we can destroy you. I will oh. get you to jail. And, wow. and he wrote an email and I, I was like, you know, people say all yeah. kinds of things. But Daisy managed to get me to jail to those lies. Yeah. And, and, but I want to say something. Um, God was really there. Like in that sense that I, I learned so much. So I, I wrote a book in there on, on a security pin. This is my pin. Oh, my gosh. I, I used 30 of those, 30 pins. That is so I don't kill anyone, you know, so I need to have a security <laughs> pin. I actually wrote two books with, this, with pins like this. Wow. But 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 my my one of my myths I really want to share just here in the end short is that one thing that really became clear for me is that right now we are in a season where it's only a few. There's a few who are in the front who's been attacked. You saw about Sean Foyt and many other people experience attack, and we can take the politician in Finland and, and other. Mm -hmm. It's a few now, but it will not stop with a few. Yeah. Soon it will be the many. And in the end, it would be everyone who confessed Jesus, Lord, everyone who stand up on the truth. And, and I think it's very important to understand that I had an attitude before that if I don't do like, like those people there, like do like them and them and them and them, I'm safe. If I just do what is right and correct and have my accounting in order and, and do things in a good and proper way, I'm safe. Yeah. But no, guys, no one is safe in that sense because it's, it's spiritual and it's because That's we so confess powerful. Jesus as Lord. And the answer is not just to hope it to disappear, but to learn. Because as I said, I was depressed. It was the hardest thing I ever tried. But there was moments where I actually sat in jail and just from the deep of my heart, thank you, God, for sending me here. Thank you, wow. God, for bringing me to this place. And I love my wife. It's good to be out, but there have been moments where I've actually, I, I miss it. I, I don't miss the humility. I don't miss the pain. <laughs> I don't miss the summer. I, I don't miss the lukewarm shower water I did there. Oh. But, but I had the strongest baptism in there. I had the strongest communion in there. I, 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 I had time with God, like in a way, no phone, no internet, no YouTube, nothing like. And now I yeah. come out of a busy world, and and I'm trying to figure out how, how okay, how, how do I not lose what I have mm. got in there? Because I don't want to go through it all again to get it. Uh, but but don't be afraid. And I'll say that there was time I felt I was led by fear and not faith. And you feel the difference. Yeah. When you're left by fear, panic is coming in, you're not ra rational anymore, and, 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 and you just expect the worst. But you can be in jail and be in a worse, pl bad place, but still be led by, by faith and wow. experience freedom in it. And, and this is what 
you know, I, I, yeah, I read the book, The Heavenly Man, Brother Jan, and he's yes. one of my fans, and I love him. Uh, not my fans, my, my heroes, sorry. I love Brother Young, and you know, I came to the same conclusion the house church movement in China came to, that no children of God is going to jail unless God have a plan and a purpose with it. Oh, that's good. And it took me a uh, maybe a half year to come to that conclusion, but I ended up the same way as those people who know what they're talking about when it comes to suffering and persecution. And 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 we need to learn by the persecuted church because yeah. they have something we often don't have. Yeah. Well, and when you're saying this, I'm glad you're giving the hope for that because some people may be listening and, and it may terrify them. But I love Jesus started out the Sermon on the Mount with blessed are you when people say bad things about you. Blessed are you when you're persecuted. Blessed are you when you're poor in spirit. All the things that like we're afraid of, you know, if there's poverty or first season because the banks won't let us operate or because some, you know, this Christian who just stood up and said, I can't supervise transgender girls in a boy's locker room. It's not, it's against my Christian belief. And he's won the case, but now that those parents are suing him, you know, yeah. so he won the case in the Supreme court, but now he's getting sued. So like these kinds of things are happening, this religious intolerance that's being legalized all the time. So it may not be like what we're seeing with people in the third world nations that are being persecuted and tortured mm -hmm. in jail, but it's still persecution. And I love that Jesus started out when he was saying, blessed are you? It's like, you just kind of gave us a picture, a glimpse in of like, no one goes to jail unless God has a plan for him. And even when you're in jail, he was with you when you came out of fear and came operate in faith. You're saying like, you're really saying this. I believe you. I kind of miss parts of it, the simplified mm -hmm. life. And the, you know, and I, I just think that there's something that we're not, when you say we're not ready for, it, I think that the average person who's watching this is like, if I was ever persecuted for my faith like that, I don't know what I would ever do. But but Jesus, if you have Jesus and it is faith, he will always give I, I you say, I, I, I was also not ready for it. But, but you know, Corinthians is saying that, that God, he will not put us over more than what we can handle. And I think it's yeah. like we, we need to... You you can be you can go to a jail experience outside in the free world. Like there's many kind of persecution and we all experience things. And I... I think we just need to learn in the small daily persecution we go through and in the small daily attacks we are under to learn yeah. to really keep our heart pure and understand that even it hurts right now, it's helping to build my character, it's helping me to come closer to God. You know, like like yeah. you sit down and see movies and see a movie and relax and it's nice and then suddenly you get a phone call and your world is falling down, what do you do? You go and pray yeah. and you see God and you actually find, okay, I did not like this bad things happen, but I'm with God now. And, mm. and, and that is actually good for me. And I think it's, it's easier to be on fire, love Jesus, when you're going through a time of suffering, than keep the fire when you're living the American dream. Wow. Um, Wow. But there's good news. Persecution are coming to a city near you. All of you. Oh but, you know what I was thinking about at one point, Torben, when you were there, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Cast Away with Tom Hanks, where he's just losing yeah. his mind because he's on a desert island. And I pictured you a couple of times. I was like, the difference between a Tom Hanks on Cast Away where he's all alone and he has Wilson the volleyball is that you literally had Jesus. Because there was times that no one spoke English around you. You didn't have a friend. You didn't have... But you, you had Jesus, and it's such a different version of like if we somehow are alone, blessed are you? Versus you know Tom Hanks' character when you're a man without God, like you're, you're just trying to keep sanity. You know, you're just trying to keep. And so many people, I'm sure, had that that experience in the same jail you were in, who were not in a similar place as you. And so I just was it really. I just thought of you a couple times, just like, wow, I wonder what his story will be at the end. And now we're getting to hear it. Tell me this. Tell me. Uh, you know, what's next now? I mean, I know you're still in an amnesty case. There's, there's several legal things happening, but as far as the ministry and the overall feel of things, what's uh -huh. God showing you for you and what, God, what are you going after? I mean, there's we, books obviously you've written, but yeah. what are you, what, what's happening now? It's a really, sorry, it really changed my life. Um, and uh, my heart, many things have happened and, before I was doing a lot of schools and, and, and training, teaching, and, and, and we have good people who continue this. I really feel God want me to go into this area of preparing the whole body mm. for what is coming. And, and, um, 
and it's, it's a little scary because I'm not so much into all, all the legal thing. I'm a very simple guy in many ways, but 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 I, I know God. God spoke very clear to me that that He He's rising people up to prepare the church for the hard season we as the body of Christ are going to go through right now. But there's always going to be a time of revival. I believe that because we we saw it. In, I saw it in there, and God wants to do it. But but we have our friends of Torben.com, and and we have a legal team working with us. And I always want to encourage people to go in on friends of And they see we have our legal defense fund because we are we are going to continue this fight. Right. My case is still running in the federal court, so I could still get my asylum every day or in a month or two or three. There's also other things we, we are working with and, and it all costs money. And I, I'm very bold when I talk about this now because I, I really feel God have, have put me in a place where I'm fighting for all of us. Because mm. my case is also going to set that kind of precedent of yeah. what is persecution? Like, how do it look like today? As you said, no one put nails under my, you know, uh, something under my nails. No, no one beat me physical. No one tortured me the way as we see other places. Yeah. But through lies and manipulation, through intimidation, like they took me in the last week and record me on a camera and wanted me to sign on a paper saying I was not allowed to talk with my lawyer. And then they wow. threatened me with doing federal uh, prosecute me and read a paper that I could go to jail for 10 years. Wow. Like I got intimidated in there and, and I, it's really important we win this fight, not only for me, but for people in America and people from Europe to, to really show that, Hey, there is persecution today. Yeah. It looks different than what we maybe are used to, but it's persecution. The same way as if somebody beat you and and physical hurt yeah. you. Wow, I'm so, so glad you're going to do that. And I do uh, want to encourage you. I want to, fight. I want to share the story. I want to encourage you and everyone out there. And and uh, as you said, I got very humble also by you standing up for me. I want to thank you for that and and everyone else. And and I'm like, we need each other in this. We really need to stand together and. As I said, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And, yeah. and we have an enemy and he hates all of us. And, and we, we cannot just spend all the time on fighting everyone else when this is happening. And, and there is a shift that is coming and it has started. And there's a lot we need to learn. And I'm just ready to jump into that fight. Well, no, I, I just want to thank you for jumping in that fight and taking your battle and making it as public as you have. Because I feel like... And it's telling us we need to learn because I feel like people who are maybe you're facing locally um, some persecution or maybe maybe it's with the school board or maybe with your students at home or maybe it's with the local po politics you live under. Like we live in L.A. So sometimes we just have to live under some stuff because of what's here. Yeah. And you don't know how to fight that. And I, I would encourage you to follow Torben's case and also so into Cor Torben's case into the legal processes that are going on right now to be a part of something and listen to his voice as he's as he's going through this, because He's identifying some things that are going to give you spiritual language to fight the battle you're fighting. And also, he doesn't just talk about what he's going through in this, but he's actually been training people for years and how to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I love that so much. So, Torben, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for being so vulnerable and so real. And we need that right now because of where we're going. And so it's just been a joy to be with you. And I'm so glad you're out. That's good. That's good. <laughs> And I, I want to say, enjoy every moment of it. And, and I'm like, just, just just wake up in the morning and be able to put, uh, take a hug to my wife, to wow. take a hot cup of coffee, to go to the fridge. I was out in the forest this morning and walking around and just enjoy it all. And I think everyone's really enjoy the small things God has given you in life. Often mm. we take it for granted. And uh, and the small things is something we can thank God for. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that you're leaving us with that. Well, thank you for watching. Make thank sure you go to friendsoftorben.com and Torben will be in touch with you again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for having me.